Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining. Where in this quick video, we'll be testing Sleeper Simulant DPS and seeing if the recent fix of the buff that never happened at the start of the season has now made this weapon a part of the meta. This will be the only weapon that I'll be breaking down damage numbers for, but when we get to the table and graph, I will compare it to other weapons that have been tested previously over the past few months. If you want to see more number breakdowns for the other weapons and combinations, I'll post links to those videos in the description down below. So, Bungie confirmed a while ago that Sleeper Simulant never received the intended buff that other linear fusion rifles did, and as of reset today, they fixed that. And while all other linear fusion rifles received a 15% buff, Sleeper Simulant now has a 16.5% buff. So, quickly, once the numbers are out of the way, we'll be comparing it to Threaded Needle with Rapid Hit and Frenzy, Xenophage on a Titan only with Axiom Warrix, The Lament, Whisper of the Worm without the time to proc Whisper Breathing, meaning you need to be aiming down sights and waiting before a damage phase starts, Cloud Strike, Izanagi's Burn with Cold Duello, the same Threaded Needle already mentioned, but this time with Wither Horde, 1000 Voices, and finally Double Slugs and Anarchy. In this example, the Double Slugs are Heritage and First In Last Out. They'll all be summarised in a table and on the graph, and then we'll test Sleeper DPS again, but this time with Breach and Clear, and the weapons or combinations it will be compared to there are the same Threaded Needle again with Wither Horde, Xenophage again with Axiom War Rigs and True Teller, The Lament with True Teller, Null Composure with Reservoir Burst and Anarchy, Cloud Strike with Blast but Chew, Code Duella with Wither Horde, 1000 Voices with True Teller, First in Last Out with Anarchy, and finally Double Slugs and Anarchy. For all weapons, no mods were used to boost reserves, legendary weapons had a major spec mod, one loader mod was used to slightly increase reload speed, and all testing with Sleeper Simulant was with the Catalyst. A lot of people are probably wondering now, why no Deathbringer with its Catalyst? Well, that's getting its own video next, and as of recording this, I still haven't finished testing. Once that is finished, however, its numbers will be directly comparable to this video and any other since the start of Season of the Chosen. So, looking at the numbers, in Season 12, Sleeper Simulant did 61,583 damage per round. For Season of the Splicer, that was supposed to increase by 15%, but it was only doing 63,586 damage per round, which was a mere 3.25% increase. However, now it's doing 70,595 damage per round, which is actually only a 15% increase. So what Bungie originally promised? With the Catalyst, you can hold a total of 13 in reserves, meaning total damage for all of those is now 917,735. For these initial timings, there isn't much to say. It's simply four full mags and a final mag of one, with three reloads in total. Total time to fire all of those is 22.15 seconds, meaning DPS came in at 41,433. Now, a table is coming on screen, ranking it next to the other weapons mentioned in order of DPS from best to worst. Pause the video now if you want more time to look at it as we're moving on to the graph. So, with Sleeper coming onto the graph and the timing clip in the lower right hand corner, there isn't much to say without other weapons on there, but I'll say it now while there's time. That final and only round in the last mag will drag down the average DPS figure. Without that, and ending the test on the third round in the previous mag, DPS would actually be 43,622. So next, I'm going to get the obvious winner out of the way, Double Slugs and Anarchy. As I'm sure most of you already know, nothing can come close to this. I tested this combination before with Breach and Clear, but this is the first time without, so a very quick run through of the numbers. Heritage did 38,319 damage per round, and a total of 14 was fired, while First and Last Out did 41,968 damage per round, and a total of 12 was fired from that. Damage from Anarchy was 393,284. This brought total damage for the method to 1,433,366, with a time of 18.48 seconds. DPS was 77,563. For a full breakdown of the perks and the method, follow the link in the description to my Breach and Clear video. And now Threaded Needle with Rapid Hit and Frenzy, and it's back and forth with Sleeper near the start, but after around 8 seconds, Sleeper never gets ahead again, and Threaded Needle also does more total damage. This is not what we want. Sleeper should be comfortably beating a legendary linear fusion rifle, whether it's well rolled or not. When Threaded Needle pulls ahead, it's by a significant margin, whereas at any points where Sleeper pulls ahead, which it doesn't do very often, it's only by a small amount. 
Xenophage now, and this is something else I haven't tested recently without breaching clear, so very quickly. This did 22,197 damage per round and could hold 28, meaning total damage was 621,516 and it's taken 13.52 seconds to do that damage. Therefore, DPS was 45,970. So the weapon that's known for average DPS, but incredibly good ease of use, and this is holding its own against Sleeper. Admittedly, it's boosted by Axiom Warwick, so there's no need to reload, but it doesn't require precision shots. So personally, I don't think this should be as close as it is to the exotic fusion rifle, even without those reloads. It does, however, have much lower total damage, which in a longer damage phase can balance things out. The Lament now, and I don't expect Sleeper to do as much as this. It's an exotic too, and of course a sword, so that excellent damage and DPS comes at the cost of high risk of death. Not to mention, there are a lot of enemies in the game that hover off the ground, making it difficult to reliably inflict damage with the sword. Whisper of the Worm now, without the time to prop Whisper Breathing, and this also beats Sleeper. Other than at the very start, where the Fusion Rifle does have slightly better burst DPS. Not sure what I think about this, it probably should be a little higher as you don't need to reload and it also requires precision shots while missing any of those and landing a body shot will absolutely tank DPS, more so than Sleeper. So arguably this should be a little better and it does have much lower total damage. Cloud Strike now and as with the previous two exotics, this comes out on top and again despite the fact it sits in the energy slot, it requires a reasonable amount of skill to land all precision shots at max fire rate. Not to mention damage from the lightning strikes can be a little inconsistent depending on the size of the target. So yeah, it probably should sit a little higher than Sleeper when used flawlessly for DPS. Is an Aggies and Cold Duello up next? This is a very strong performer and has unmatched burst DPS. Nothing comes close until around 3 seconds and after the second pair of rounds fired, it's not until 5 seconds when the double slugs and anarchy pull ahead. With regards to Sleeper, they're quite close during the reload periods for the duo, but when they're both fired, it propels itself ahead again and comfortably, and gradually opens up the gap further the longer time goes on. Threaded Needle with Wither Horde now, since this is a tick damaging weapon paired with it, I do expect this combo to be slightly better as well, but you're taking up two weapon slots in order to achieve this. It can be easy to fumble when switching between the two in the heat of the moment, or at least it sometimes is for me, and the burst DPS is a lot lower. It does also have the second highest damage in the test though, second only to Double Slugs and Anarchy. And for the final weapon on the graph, it's 1k Voices, and this isn't even in the same league as anything else. From nearest damage 3 seconds onwards, it's lower than everything else, and it sits on its own at the bottom away from the group for the entire test. I think this needs a buff next. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's look at the numbers for Breach and Clear. Damage for Sleeper Simulant with the mod proc is 91,774. With 13 in reserves and no mods boosting that, total damage comes in at 1,193,062. This was paired with True Teller, which did 32,895 damage per round, of which 3 were fired. This brings total damage to 1,291,747. For the method and timings, this requires whatever grenade launcher you're using to have auto load and holster. So start with a round from True Teller, then switch to Sleeper and empty 2 max, only reloading once in between. Then it's back to True Teller to fire another round, reproc and breach and clear, and also reload in the currently stowed fusion rifle. And then repeat the same as before with two mags from Sleeper, only reloading once. Then for the last time, go back to the grenade launcher, fire, and return to the fusion rifle, reloaded with that one round in the final mag. Total time for this was 22.62 seconds, therefore DPS was 57,106. Now with the table coming on screen comparing this to a choice of weapons with breach and clear, although not all the same as in the first set of results. Pause the video if you want more time to look at this as we're moving on to the graph. So of course, starting with Sleeper. You can see there'll be three small vertical lines on this one, which is where I've switched to True Teller and fired from that in order to proc breach and clear. This falls in line very nicely with the seasonal mod, at least for my test, as after every second magazine, it was time to reproc the damage buff and reload the fusion rifle. The final vertical line, as before, is just damage from the final round. 
Now I'm going to get the shotguns out the way first, starting with double slugs and anarchy, as this just can't be matched. As you'll see once every weapon is on the graph, after 3-4 to four seconds, it's way ahead of everything and climbs at a rate unparalleled by anything else. This method really is in a league of its own, although let's not forget it's not the easiest to execute perfectly and it can come with ammo economy problems. And now first in last out, so just one shotgun paired with anarchy. It may not be as potent as double slugs, of course, but as you'll see, it's also a league above the rest, comfortably beating any other weapon or combo other than double slugs. However, it empties all rounds in less than 15 seconds and only has the fifth highest total damage in the test. Threaded Needle and Wither Horde now, which is ahead of Sleeper again for the majority of the time, but you can't complain considering it has a tick damaging weapon, boosting it all the way. This method also has the second highest total damage in the test and is extremely capable. Xenophage now, and as I said in my Breach and Clear video, I do wonder if this will be better if after the damage from the seasonal mod ends, it may be worthwhile to just keep on firing. Total damage will be lower, but if you don't have time to fire all rounds, it's possible DPS could be higher. Overall though, it doesn't do great so far, with low total damage output and unable to match Threaded Needle after 3 seconds or so. It trades places with Sleeper Simulant a couple of times, but overall I'd say the Exotic Fusion Rifle is the better option, ease of use aside. Next up is the Lament, shotguns aside again. This is the best in the test, although there are still moments where it dips below Threaded Needle and Wither Horde, but it is only twice. This will always be an excellent choice for DPS, with or without Breach and Clear, but that doesn't come without risk, and is why its DPS is justifiably so high. No Composure with Reservoir Burst now, paired with Anarchy. This has been taken from my last video and really was a surprise. On its own, DPS is abysmal, but with Anarchy and almost perfect synergy with Breach and Clear, it becomes an excellent choice for DPS. It can't quite match the Laments, although it stays relatively close to Threaded Needle, passing it momentarily on one occasion around 14 seconds, and also has really good total damage output. It falls way behind Sleeper Simulant Burst DPS at the start, but that large magazine and the fact you don't need to reload due to Breach and Clear means it claws it back and ultimately just about comes out on top. Cloud Strike and Blast for Chew next, and this does well. Mingles with Threaded Needle and Wither Horde, although I personally think the Fusion Rifle is the better option. If anything, it's probably a closer match to Null Composure, which demonstrates how well the Fusion Rifle purrs with Anarchy and Breach and Clear. And it is, at almost any given point, above Sleeper Simulant. Coduello and Wither Horde now. This is more of a match for the Exotic Fusion Rifle as they jump back and forth with each other. It has very good burst and sustained DPS, although its total damage output is a little low compared to most other weapons so far. Personally, I'd pick Sleeper Simulant. And finally, 1k voices. As before, this just can't compete. Ironically though, the only weapon it overtakes after the start is Sleeper Simulant, the very weapon this video is based on, and you can see that's around the 6-7 to seven second mark. Still, it's really lacking and could certainly use a buff of its own. Which leads me nicely onto a summary and my opinion of Sleeper Simulant, and just remember that's all it is, an opinion. You are free to disagree. Is it part of the DPS meta? Well, Yes and no. In the grand scheme of things, it absolutely is. It's on the graph though, just about hanging on when compared to some other excellent options in the game. Remember, this is being compared to some of the best weapons and combos I've tested. However, if we narrow those horizons and think realistically, that is, when a player is making a decision on what hard-hitting DPS weapon to run, this is just some of the competition and in my opinion, there are much better options. Breach and clear or not, it's barely average in the context of both tests, more so on its own, and is beat by most other examples. Why would you use it, unless you just like the weapon, when you could use a well-rolled threaded needle if you have one, which I think is the better option, and leaves you free to use the exotic slot on something else, such as Wither Horde, just as an example, in which case threaded needle is then a clear winner over sleeper for DPS, although that is expected. Taking the artifact mod out of the equation, Whisper can be a better choice, even Cloud Strike, and that sits in the energy slot. These are all long range examples as well. If you want close range DPS, then the easy choice is obviously swords or slug shotguns. Personally, I am feeling ever so slightly disappointed, and something that I've said already in previous linear fusion rifle videos, as well as in the comments section of some of those, 
it was never really the damage per round of sleeper that held it back. It's the fact it only holds three in the magazine and is relatively slow to reload. If this held four or maybe even five in the mag, I think it would actually be quite close to the laments. Not quite as good, of course, but close. Yet here we are, and it can't be a well-rolled threaded needle even without with a horde. Sleeper doesn't need another damage buff to be a top tier option, and I don't think it really needed one anyway. If it was up to me, however, which I know it isn't, I'd just give it the extra round or two in the mag, maybe even another round or two in reserves as well to help boost its total damage output. But you never know, maybe it turns out to be the best against Atheon for reasons we don't understand. And on that note, it's all from me. Apologies if it got a little negative towards the end, but still, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already, and give me any feedback in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.